Talking about the paper airplanes and growing up reminds me that when we are budgeting, we need to make sure that we don't forget about fun. Now, fun could be budgeted as entertainment. It could be shopping. It could be whatever it is that you enjoy that you find to be bringing you an economical amount of joy, but we don't want to forget it entirely. Budgeting isn't saying no to everything, and it's not saying no to fun. What you'll find is if you put fun in your budget, it gives you permission. It gives you freedom to spend on that fun. When the fun is planned in advance, you don't have to feel anxious that you're spending the money that you need for something else on that fun because you know all your needs are met. You know all of your goals have been planned. You know that you're not compromising anything and you don't have to be plagued by infinite opportunity cost. Fun is an important thing to be incorporating into our lives. Your hope-filled financial journey, your hope-filled financial future doesn't start after. It doesn't start after you found some semblance of success or hit certain mile markers. It starts today. The, the next day in the rest of your life is tomorrow. And you should enjoy it. And that's my budget tip for you today. Next, on to a question submitted by a listener. On episode four of the Hope Filled Financial Podcast, we discussed economy in the context of frugality. That's how we wrapped up our, our series on frugality, in particular to give an example of the 80-20 rule, where if you got something that covered about 80% of your utility, 80% of your wants, 80% of what you were looking for, it would cost you about 20% of something that covered 100% or your dream purchase. The example I gave was in the context of two cars. My personal dream car is a 1960s Austin Martin DB5. Silver, flawless condition. The James Bond car. The most beautiful classic car that I could ever wish for. And back when I was dreaming about these, they would cost about $300,000, give or take. At least that's what I found. However, most of what I'd be wanting to get out of a toy sports car, I could probably get from a Corvette. And I could get one that would be newer, a little more reliable, and probably cheaper to maintain. A four-year-old Corvette would cost around $80,000. Not quite all the way down to 20% of the Austin Martin, but it fills the example of how the 80-20 rule works. I would be getting just about as much enjoyment out of that car as I would the Austin Martin DB5, which is significantly more expensive. 